Here we go. All right, guys, welcome to this first uh, Arm Care Elite Scrum. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Ryan Croton. You don't have to call me Doc. Some people, you know, use that euphemism. That's uh, that's my dad. That's not me. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is we're going to do some advanced enriched education. The purpose of the Arm Care Elite is to build upon the education you already have and, and get into some deeper layers. And this mastermind group, you know, you're going to support us with questions. If we have blind spots, we're going to get experts to come in. That's for sure. You guys are going to drive the ship as well. Just being able to contribute um, to the community. I mean, that's that's the whole thing is getting a, a community perspective around arm health and performance. OK, so um, this topic that we're going to go through is actually a true case study of somebody I work with, you know, has major command issues. Um, and, you know, I'm going to kind of dial in where we've lost the pitch efficiency ratio with the athlete and what we're looking for. And uh, definitely in the follow-up, you know, put your Q&A uh, questions in there. That's where we're going to look at these. And whatever we can't answer, it's going to probably make for a great next step um, for next uh, Scrum. Um, and also, we want to feature you guys, too. So don't be shy um, with other ideas. You know, we're not the all-knowing people. You know, we're always wanting uh, extra information and, and for us to really, you know, connect data to it. So, you know, here we go. This is a case study. So I'm going to just share my screen. Got two of them going. And be with you in just a minute. All right. Jordan, let me know if you can see these, buddy. It's all good. Okay, perfect. All right. So here we go. All right. So what we're going through here is this case study on pitch efficiency ratio. For those of you who don't, don't know you know, what the pitch efficiency ratio is, because you might have just enrolled in the course, you might not have been diving through it, or you might have taken it a while ago, and you don't remember, you know, we're looking at the pitches per inning. Okay, we're not going to look at every single factor here. But when we, we go to make a mechanical change, all right, there's a flow. If the door's not broken, and you go to fix it, there's a problem, you could actually be encouraging other injuries that are going to happen down the line. And that's why we have a system, you got to first fix strength and length, right? Now, with this particular athlete, we did have poor performance, no pain, thank God, but the athlete wasn't locating their pitches, okay? So, you know, the first thing that we would look at is, is rebalancing the arm for this particular athlete. I'm going to show you what happened, but you're fixing strength and length. Now, after that has been, uh, you know, improved, now you're going to look into, okay, here's my mechanical change, and I'm diving through these, uh, these optimization factors to make sure that what I'm suggesting is actually going to be advantageous for the athlete. Far too often, um, I've worked with a lot of injured players. I'm still doing it. I'm consulting for them. They give me a rap sheet of a ton of mechanical changes. Like within a year, they're bouncing all over the mound. They're, you know, shortening their arm path. You know, they're, uh, you know, trying to close their foot off. There's all sorts of different things that affect their motor preferences. And you have to do the due diligence of understanding, you know, have I really made this problematic for my athlete the the compression you got here is that you fix strength and length now there's millions of people out there that are going into making changes okay and what they're not doing is going through and seeing do these changes are they actually degrading some elements of the delivery and we're talking about the pitch efficiency ratio which is the pitches per inning okay there's a few different pathways people work from the ground up I actually, and what we do in their company, we're from the fingertips down because the injuries are happening to the shoulder and elbow, right? And so we want to be able to attack that first. And we want to look, is there a change in laxity? Is there a change in strength? Is there a change in timing? These are all things that we would have to go and approach when we see pain and poor performance, right? Don't, don't break the door if it's not broken. All right. So that's a, that's a key message. Now, this particular athlete, um, when he was going well, he still had an alert, okay? And we, we were under on ER, right? But you can see this particular dude, not very big, but heavy amounts of strength, almost 240 pounds throughout all our tests. That, that's a high level uh, amount of strength for this particular athlete. Um, and so, you know, this contributes to the arm score. And if you guys have taken this and you're doing the right training, this, sh this should be progressively up. Now, anybody that's got an injury history, I'm telling you, um, wherever you catch them, if you catch them in season, like I do, you're kind of, you're trying to push strength, but you don't want to push fatigue. But in that off season, if guys have had surgery, you're looking for a hundred plus, you got to make that arm strong. 
um, because there's fibrotic tissue, there's abnormalities that you're going to overcome. And the athlete's obviously set, sensitive to a secondary injury. So you can't fool around there. This athlete hit a PR. If you haven't looked too deeply in the app, if you haven't, you, you've enrolled with the courses, but you haven't looked at them. You know, his PR was 140. So we did lose some, right? We, we lost 4% strength. Um, and, and, and that can be a, you know, big issue, but what we're seeing here, he had blue for everything, but right here, we know there's a shoulder balance issue to begin with. Okay. So when he came to me um, and and he lacked, you know, this, this uh, ability to locate, you can see that he went into a warning. Okay. So, you know, you guys know, taking the course, the shoulder balance is starting to slant more towards IR. This kid's getting heavy on the front side and, you know, doing a program review, you know, not even don't just pay attention to the arm care. The strength training approach as well was very anterior chain. You think that, you know, a lot of lat pull downs is your back. Remember, it attaches on your front. There was a ton of vertical pull in this guy's exercise plan um, that really starts to drive this in the wrong direction. And so we're, you know, we've been working on on improving this. So that's that's essentially fixing strength and length, right? We know we got a performance issue, you know, building that. Now, here's the thing that I want to go through is we're gonna get into biomechanical data. Okay. And, and some people, uh, I go through it in the course, how to read the graph. I'm going to re I'm going to re-educate you. And we're actually going to look at it on the 3d animation. Okay. On one of the screens, right? Jordan, both screens are up. Correct. You yep, can see. You're good. Okay. So now what we're looking at, and I went through the shoulder external rotation curve. We're actually looking at horizontal abduction. So if I'm going to go over here, all right, and I'm going to spin down on my guy. I'll move him around. Horizontal abduction, okay, is basically this arm going behind, okay? So I'm going to draw this because I want you guys to really understand this, okay? I'm getting kind of new with the annotation app uh, component of this. So um, let me grab a pen. Uh, maybe I should be able to draw it. Okay, so here you go. Let's just say, you know, this is a, this is a line that bisects the entire trunk, okay? This is zero. Huh. This is zero, all right? So when I'm down here, I'm going back to my graph now, okay, on the on the spreadsheet. I'm here, this is zero. This means I'm like really neutral, okay? Now you can see this particular dude, when we're talking about horizontal abduction, this is going behind the trunk, okay? Now, within the scapular plane, it's, it's basically, you know, you're looking at about 30 to 45 degrees, okay? Um, when you're in the opposite direction, so this way. So, you know, you're, you're looking at 35 to 40 degrees this way with the arm, okay? That is horizontal adduction, all right? Now, this abduction, uh, you know, it can get way back there, right? This athlete um, is around 20 degrees, okay? Uh, gets kind of bigger at foot contact. So, we're looking at, you know, arm position. This is horizontal abduction, okay? So, you'd be looking at this lower graph. You know, when they hit, I just wanted you to take a look at this lower graph here, the horizontal adduction, we're dipping above zero at maximal external rotation, okay? So I'm going to clear, clear this. This is something that I want you guys to see. Clear the drawings. I'm going to change the, um, I'm going to change the perspective of what we're looking at. Oops. Okay. This should clue me back in. Okay. So now I'm going to get to the point of foot contact, all right? Really find it. Okay, and I'm going to show you some things in 3D, okay? So I'm going to the point where you should see this force vector. Jordan, we see this, that gold arrow? Yes? Yeah, you're good. So, so you know that this is, you know, this is foot contact, all right? So now I'm going to take you back to the graph because I want you guys to understand this stuff. Or we're not going to get too far if we don't understand how to put the picture into graphical information and, and we're going to go beyond numbers, okay? Like eventually. These are the hallmark events, so this is at um, foot contact, maximal external rotation, ball release. Okay, and this is follow through. This is after the ball's let go, maximal internal rotation right here. So now I'm at foot contact, right? Again, we're gonna look at horizontal abduction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here a little bit. We're gonna get over top of this guy. Now, if I'm looking at this graph, which is not him, okay? Um, this particular athlete has a lot of horizontal abduction. This looks like it's about 25 degrees in between zero and negative 50, right? So again, when I annotate this sucker, we're, we're looking at here's the line, here's zero. This is the horizontal abduction. How far back um, are we, right? At this point, we're below zero, all right? So that's at foot contact. Now let's go, 
let's let's uh, clear all the drawings. Now, let me take you to the next phase. This is where it gets creative, okay? Where we can kind of start to figure out why is this athlete having command issues, all right? Now, the next phase of this is looking at maximal external rotation. There's a phase in between called the brace transfer phase. We're not going to talk about the progression to get to those points. That's a little bit further along. But now I'm going to go to the maximal external rotation. It's kind of hard for me to see it without the graphs. Um, but he is definitely not squared up. It's generally his, this is one of the issues too. He doesn't get to the zero point. So he's not facing his target at ball release. Okay. And remember in the, um, the matrix of strength and coordination um, decision tree, proximal deceleration comes under. We first worry about the arm. Then we're going to worry about the rotational elements. Okay. So we definitely know this athlete is not head on. Um, and you could probably see he's going to miss a lot arm side high, just, just based on where his head is. Okay. So now I'm going to go back into this guy and now I'm getting back over top. So now we want to make sure we're taking a look, I'm going to come out a little bit of where is this, this elbow. Okay. At this position, I'm going to annotate again. Cause when we go back to my graph, um, let's just say this is the straight line. Okay. I'm going to roll out a little bit. Um, I, I get back a little bit more. Okay. So you know, when we roll out, you can see, you know, his elbow, um, let me give you a stamp. His elbow is ahead of that zero line. Okay. So it's, it's ahead of that zero line. We got, we got trouble. This, this, this is the zero line here, right? So we got to make sure, you know, we're, we're going to be um, going into a pushy delivery. Okay, now I'm showing you back on this graph that I want you guys to see right here. All right, I'm annotating where this dot is. Notice this progression of this black line. This athlete, there's a potential that the athlete is starting to become even pushier at maximum external rotation. Now, thank God, this particular dude has a rocket strong grip strength. His pinch grip is, is amazing. So I know his elbow can handle it. The tricep could get fired up in this position, but you know, we're, we're looking for this. Is there a change when you look at this, when you look at the delivery? Okay. These are things, these are clues that, you know, it, we've had a shift or they may have a motor preference and they're performing well, um, towards more of like a, a push delivery. Okay. So, um, hope everybody's good there. Any QA on horizontal abduction. Okay. Um, we gotta, we gotta know that. So that's our position. You can see too, you know, we go back on the graph. There's a progression downward at ball release. Obviously, our elbows are coming ahead of our trunk. And I'm just going to go over here so you can complete this um, on this side. I'll, sp I'll spin it around. Let's go to ball release, okay, approximated. So it's probably right about there. He's still slightly externally rotated, about 10 degrees. Um, I'm going to clear all, all my drawings so that we don't get confused. Okay, I'm going to come in here. Yep. Sorry, guys. I'm going to come in here, rotate us around. Okay. Now we got to look at the trunk perspective again. Okay, hey, Ryan, so this is a you got a question on, uh, I'm not even going to try that last name. We'll just say John. He okay. says, can you clarify is horizontal abduction good, bad, uh, in and of itself? Okay. So here you go. Remember it's pain or poor performance right? It's pain or poor performance. Okay. So this athlete, we, you, you know, we got to fix strength and length. That's the first thing we do. I'm going to go back to drawing. Look at what happens on this graph. We started to climb up this athlete. Something's going on in arm strength, setting that position. He's starting to drift his elbow forward. Okay. In this particular case, we have poor performance. So this change has led to poor performance. Now, if you see this athlete, they're performing well, they got no pain. We got to make sure that arm is strong as hell especially around the elbow, because they have that pushy delivery, but they're performing well, you see, and if you go and you do makeshift work and change them, and you don't look at the optimization factors, and the strength goes down, and you're, you're, you know, you look at all them pitch efficiency changes, you've created a problem as a coach, okay, so I, I, I like that question, you know, is this bad, is this good, is there pain and poor performance, okay, this kid did have, so we gotta, we gotta fix it, all right, I'm clearing all drawings, Okay, in this particular instant, this is where I want people to not get um, kind of confused with biomechanics. We think of like transverse, everything is like this. The transverse plane, this dude is flexed, okay? So we got to look at the trunk in this position. 
All right, I'm going to annotate it again. So you guys really figured out. Here's my zero line. I know it's kind of messy um, across the shoulders. This is zero degrees, okay, where I'm really neutral, right? Um, but now let me get out the annotation right now. I'm going to um, rotate us. If I carried that line forward, okay, um, I'll annotate it so it goes a little forward. We have, you know, some more adduction. This is horizontal add H. I'm going to try to draw here, guys. It's not nice. It looks like my uh, six-year-old. Um, we got horizontal adduction. We're coming forward. I mean, we got to. But some guys, I got some guys that throw 100. They actually release the ball with a negative position. They release the ball behind the trunk, which is incredible because they're getting a ton of uh, trunk flexion into, into bringing the arm forward. Okay, remember, pain and poor performance, you know, that, that's what we got to stick to. So this is this dude, um, how he throws. Okay, so we're, we're learning about the arm path here. Remember the first rung of what I'm talking about um, with the uh, strength and coordination decision tree. Okay, so I'm clearing all these drawings. we got to figure this out. Okay, next thing I'm going to go is, is what should be easy to you guys is the abduction angle, shoulder abduction in this plane. Let me go back. Uh, I'm going to come out of my annotation so you guys can see what's going on. All right. Cause this guy's very unique. All right. I'm going to spin him around. Jordan, we good. Let's, let's go back to ball. Let's go to back to foot contact. Okay. I'm going to get a spike here. That's too much. That's, that's too late into foot contact right about there. Okay. We, we're starting to see some, I'm going to go in here. If you guys want to look at the vector, right. I'm going to cruise right in. You see that he's starting to load the plate. Okay. Now people look at weight bearing foot flat. They look at stride foot contact. You know, we're, we're saying this is contact. All right, now here's the thing. We're looking at shoulder abduction. I'm going to annotate this. Here is the midline. All right. Uh, if I draw it up here, here's zero degrees. All right. Now, anything that moves from our arms even with our midline and is going upwards, okay, that is shoulder abduction. I call that S A B D. All right, we we want to know this stuff. Sorry about the B. It looks like an E, um, because as we get going, I'm gonna have short forms for stuff. We're gonna we're gonna consolidate a lot of data. You guys are gonna be real experts, way better than Jordan and I. Um, so this is short shoulder abduction. Now, if we go back the other way, right? This is shoulder adduction. All right, we're gonna see something here. Okay, now I'm gonna come out of it. Let's let's clear this. So hopefully everybody's got that. Clear all my drawings. Get out of the annotation. And we're going to go to the graph. All right. So and, and we're going to visualize this. So here we go. I'm going to annotate. Now look at the graph. This is what I want to show you. You see this athlete at foot contact is low. OK, from where they were. You see this white space. Whenever we look at graphs, we say, oh, is there white space? That means something's changed. Right. So you can see the progression. I'm just tracing over this line. This athlete is in a lot more of an adducted position. And that's, you know, that's kind of natural. But if you see this change, you know, it's natural to him. Um, you know, and it's coming with a poor performance or pain. It's something to clue in on. They were at 90 degrees. And then, you know, all of a sudden that foot contact, they're low. Now, let's go back to the, uh, the 3D. So 3D here, when I get back here, I'm going to trace the elbow. Okay, we're going we're gonna to look at the, the humerus. I want you guys to see the path. You see how people say, okay, he's got this elbow hike. But, you know, the thing is, is he, he does have to raise it because he's trying to get over the top. But there are a lot of pitchers that, that land in more of an adducted position. This is about 80 degrees in here. Okay, this isn't your 90 get to a T dude. This is how he pitches. And I'll tell you why. If, if this athlete, and you got to watch this, um, may, may not in this position, may not have the ability to do the horizontal abduction very well. He's got to load his pec. So at this posi position, we're changing the length tension and this athlete might be wound up. They can't bring their arm back. So when I hear coaching, it's like, you know, elbows to the sky, you know, they want to change that in an athlete that has this motor preference of landing in more of an adducted position and climbs when he rotates. You got to be careful because you may change their ability to come back. OK, so like as he as he hits, you know, when he loads and he's he's coming down the mound, he's in a low position for a long time. He's in a very low adducted position. 
in a long time. He doesn't bring his elbow up. So we got to we got to pay attention to all this. OK, now here's the kicker. He gets up here at, at maximum external rotation. I'm going to talk to you about this data. All right. Um, and, you know, he climbs and now he's around 90. OK, um, or a little higher. He's higher than 90 here. But what you're going to see as he's transitioning to ball release, OK, from maximum external rotation to ball release, the arm, if I go right in, and this is natural for a lot of players, but if it becomes significant, it leads to um, pitch efficiency issues, is that the humeral head is going to start to go down, OK, um, to try to maintain this, this position. And if there's not space, you know, and they got some some different anatomy, OK, um, we're going to we're they're, they're trying to create room. The arm's going to lower as they go into internal rotation. Internal rotation is basically this, right? We know the test, internal rotation test. The arm is rotating forward. It can't do that hiked up. It's going to drop naturally. OK, so we got to know this. Now, when it becomes too much of a difference, I'm going back to my graph. OK, now I'm looking at here. This is my external rotation position. Here's my internal. You can see it dips down. I'm going from external here and it might come down a little bit as I'm throwing. All right. Now, if it becomes even more severe, see, I'm drawing this line, it might be over three or four degrees. You're going to have some accuracy issues. You've changed your release point. All right. Um, and I see this a lot when we we do pitch development and, and you know, we miss some things. So I'm going to clear my drawings here. Um, I want you guys to go over to my uh, graphs and charts. I'm going to show you. Let's just talk about the, the data. So the form data is this. You're going to see this actual graph of this athlete. You're going to see here's foot contact with the blue line. I'm looking at data from the pulses system. It's great. And then you see that, you know, in shoulder abduction, he has this arm climbing. Okay. So this is why you got to be able to look at the curve too. And how has this changed? And then you see it flattens out. This is maximal external rotation. It's flat and it comes down a little bit at ball release at this red line. This gives you the tracing to be able to actually visualize. Do I see white space, right? I tell you in the course, look for white space. Um, pretty straightforward, I hope, uh, on the graph. Don't get bogged down in numbers and all that kind of stuff. It's like pain, poor performance. I'm looking at the graphs. Is there white space? Bang. Is it significant, right? Now, looking at the table data, you can see, okay, I was pretty right. I try to remember it. He's around 80 degrees, okay, for all his pitches. I look at every pitch. Most studies are really focused on fastballs. I look for deception. I'm going to talk to you guys about this briefly, and we'll get more deeper as we go along. Um, but I want to look at, at ball release right here. What does he look like? So at release, I know at shoulder external rotation, he's he's more flat. So you can see 97 at, at a shoulder external rotation. I'm going to annotate this so you, you guys know where I'm looking, right? I'm looking at these, these two here, okay? So the top line, the top one is external rotation. The bottom is ball release. And we got, you know, a one degree change. So he's pretty flat there. Once he gets there, he climbs, but he's pretty pretty flat there. Okay, and we're worried about, you know, are we are we getting our positions wrong? Okay, um, but look across all these pitches. All right, fastball and breaking ball are almost identical, probably to a hitter. If they're trend, if they're if they're hard focused on the hat, they're going to the hand. It's not going to be that significant to see the change in the ball release point. But look at this, and this isn't unusual. Okay, the off speed, we went from 96 to 103. That's a seven degree change. So it, it's this, you know, they're, they're going to see that change at ball release. All right. Um, and we got to we got to watch out for that. So that's something on deception. And maybe the some of the consistency about that, uh, uh, about that ball release position is, is what we're after here. Right. So, you know, I'm trying to take a look. He's more internally rotated there. So that's pretty late. Um, that's probably ball release. That we're looking at it's it is definitely throws it more externally rotated but we're talking about seeing small changes in in, in having an elevated a higher hand position all of these things are gonna, they're going to get him hit around he's he's missing and probably they're going to be tipping okay some of the the late stage uh stuff okay hey ryan you got a question on why a pitcher might change on that off speed in terms of that movement um, so in terms of release point, like they might want to have more downward action, you know, it's possible. Um, I got one guy I work with, he's more like a Ryan Yarborough arm path. Um, and, and he's trying to get to the side of the ball, right? It, it just depends on, on the action that, that they're inherently wanting on that pitch. And this is a place to remember if they're, if they're having poor performance, um, and you're, you build strength, right? You got to go there first. Cause they, you know, I'm going to show you, you know, where you could be losing positioning. 
um, then you can go and you can get creative a little bit because you know the arm is strong. Now, I will caution you, you'll have, you know, this is deeper into motor preference. You're going to have some guys that are supinators. They like throwing supinated pitches. And then all of a sudden I'm putting in a pronated pitch and their arm starts barking because you're getting them to do this and this and this and this. And so you have to prepare your athlete for a new pitch grip or if they're manipulating the ball, you got to watch out for that. Cause honestly, I don't mean to be rude, but you could be the problem. Um, hey Ryan, could you also zoom in on your numbers a little bit? Some guys are having a hard yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll zoom in. Thank you. And then uh, if I, if I can add on to that, if you don't mind. Yeah, man. Um, so to answer that question too, is, you know, there's two other things that could be happening from a developmental standpoint to where if you're seeing that change, from the pitch type, you can look at it that is that a fatigue issue? Because when we were monitoring guys, we did see that sometimes those pitch characteristics would change um, based on fatigue. It could also, depending on if you have this, this information, I know there's some guys in the pro realm to where if you really want to dive in, sometimes it can change based on handedness of hitter as well. So then all of a sudden that could be a mental or a visual aspect on righty versus lefty, same side versus opposite side. Or the final thing generally, you know, kind of the rule of thumb is if they're working on that pitch, they could be trying to manipulate that and that changes biomechanics in there too. If it's not a, uh, an aspect of what Ryan's Ryan's referencing in this case study of that shoulder imbalance. Um, so those are some other things too. If they're checking the boxes on all those other aspects, those are generally the three things you can kind of go to and get a good understanding of, is he fatigued? Is it a handedness of hitter and he manipulates versus righty versus lefty or right on right, right on left, or, you know, flip it for the other handedness, or are we trying to do something with this athlete? And if you're a coordinator or, you know, a director, or if you're an affiliate coach, college coach, dad, whoever it may be, and you're looking at those things and you see all of a sudden that change up arm slots getting higher, he's trying to manipulate that ball as opposed to letting it actually work. Um, does that make sense? Right. Yeah. I'm saying? I, I hope everybody can see this now. I blew up what I'm talking about. Looking across these pitches, breaking ball, fastball, off speed. Jordan, does it look pretty bigger for you? It's bigger. Still, it's just the background. It's kind of hard to see it on there. That okay. navy blue. Okay, okay. You know, basically, uh, w- there's a there's like a one or two degree change from maximal external rotation to ball release. The ball release it's sinking down a little bit, and it's it's it is natural. But you know, when it starts to become more pronounced, it's a problem. And what I'm saying at the off speed, okay, is his arm. Okay, his arm is is pretty high. You know, we're looking at he's at 106 when he's going into max external. Okay, and he's still at 103 when he's releasing. So there's a three degree change. Okay, but it's it's like seven degrees almost. You know, uh, above his other pitches. Okay, so you got to look at these things. You can't look at one pitch in a vacuum. And when you teach him a new pitch in a new location, it just changes the nodes of everything. So you really have to pay attention to this data. Um, to to do the best you can with your pitchers, okay? So now I'm going to go um, into some of the changes. So let me go back to annotate. I'm going to clear everything here, uh, and I'm going to get out of this. So now I'm just showing you a regular a regular training. Let's just say this person has lost shoulder abduction. They might they may show um, uh, some strength imbalances and weaknesses of scaption, um, and also in the D cell and X cell position, right? If if they don't have strength you know, translated through the whole shoulder joint. We got problems. This this is from uh, some of the courses I presented this before. This is just a, a simple um, javelin carry. Okay. Um, and you got you need a strong athlete. Now I got an open hand. And uh, in the uh, specialist course reshoot, it's now 10 hours. I talk about what open hand and closed hand means. I'm not going to get too long into it, but it, it changes the muscle irradiation in, in terms of propagating more recruitment of those muscles. But um, you know, we're talking about having co-contraction in an, in a position where they're upright, right? They need the strength to be able to be, uh, um, holding positions and, and be in a solid place. Okay. Now I, I focused on a lot of this stuff. Okay. We're talking about movement this way and this way. I didn't get into this cause I hammer this in the course, but I'm going to fly back over to our, our image. Okay. I'm going to get, get to the point where this athlete's at external rotation. Okay. Now remember getting back to that shoulder imbalance. Okay. Um, when he doesn't have very good co-contraction strength comparatively from front to back and co-contraction, I mean that both sides of the joint, the muscles are compressing. I'm going to show you, I want everybody to really kind of window in on the forearm. Okay. So I'm in maximal external rotation per se. You're going to see, you see how I'm moving it and it's not changing position that much. 
So people don't get this, but when the arms in maximal external rotation, a lot of what happens, it's isometric. It's not moving. It's moving around in your turn. Okay. You're moving it in your turn. Now, if my athlete has poor co-contraction front to back, it's going to impact, you know, my positioning in all planes, all those muscles, right? Especially uh, external rotation and, um, and internal rotation. They got to hold it there, right? Hey, Ryan, I'm I don't laying know back. Screen, stop sharing, but can you exit out and reshare? Sounds like some people can't see the screen. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Okay. So I'm going to, I will. Uh, and then also Mike Killian has observed also that he's seen that, that change up change because they're trying to use that elbow to pronate it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now I don't know why that people can't get this one. It was fine for me. Let's try it again. Yeah, I was able to see it. I think it was just a couple people. Can, can we get it? Do we got it? We get it. I see it on my end. All right. Good. I'm sorry. You guys are going to have to watch a video because I see it on mine too. So, you know, basically we need to, uh, we need to understand that we set the catapult, right? Oh, I exploded out of here. Um, going to go to the forearm. I'll, I'll roll, roll it along. I want to get back there. So here I am in external rotation. Let's just say I'm going to go a couple clicks behind and forward. You can see that all that's happening for a long time, pretty much is a translation of abdu abduction. Okay. Adduction through the turn. Okay. And also remember this guy's got an elbow climb. So he's going to go into shoulder abduction. This is just what he wants to do. You better be sure that that ratio improves because he's changing the co-contraction and stabilizing the joint and loading the catapult. Okay. So there's a lot of things that are at play. So if I can set that up, well, you know, I'm in a good spot. So, you know, here's what I'm doing with them. And in, in the newsletter I wrote, I talked about econ training. I don't do a ton of concentric. When I say con, it's not concentric. It's co-contraction. The arm's got to be set in the right position. So, you know, we're taking this player again, you know, maybe they don't, they, they can't keep the right horizontal ad and abduction. They need strength back there, right? You, you know, you got lots of stuff, your external rotator cuff, your posterior delt, there's all sorts of stuff, you know, your scap retraction, they, they have to work um, to keep that arm in position. So this is econ training. It's eccentric co-contraction training. Okay. I got the heavy bands. I'm in sunny Arizona. That's over 110 degrees, right? Um, you wonder why I don't wear sleeves. It should be making sense to you intuitively. So when you when you watch what I'm doing here, I got a lot of leg. I'm not wasting time pulling this back. I want a lot of tension as I'm walking back. You see, I put myself in external rotation and I'm not going to extreme ranges, just kind of where I comfortably can create force. Okay. And then I'm walking back. Now here, you know, this is your 25 pound bands, but back here, it's probably like 50. Okay. I don't let them become tight as a rope. There's still some bounce in them. Okay. I'm not roping these things out. Um, you, you may snap them, but what I'm doing is I'm holding this and I got a very low um, co-contraction state. Like I got it for like three seconds. I don't do crazy stuff. And we're not talking about programming in this one. We got to talk about, you know, some of the volumetric elements and how you can really pound somebody to death if you don't do these right. Um, but, you know, I, I get to my co-contraction state and I work on the eccentric because remember, you're going to gain more strength and length and eccentric. Now, this athlete I didn't mention also has a velocity problem. And you got these things inside your muscles called spindles. And these little kind of organelles in the cell, they, they align themselves with the fibers and, and the tendon to say, how much can I stretch and how fast? And if those things aren't trained to handle fascicle length and the speed of, of, of loading, now we got a kind of a trifecta as the guy's got arm positioning, we got pitch efficiency issues. And now maybe his um, strength velocity ratio is actually climbing. His velo is going down, right? Remember, taking the course, 1.6 is the magic number. But, you know, I got some guys that are in the threes. They just don't throw fast enough. And we got to do something about that. So there's multi, multi benefits. Um, I'm going to close this out. We, we went over, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I know you got busy schedules. But this is the case closed, basically, on, on this particular uh, case study. You know, talking to you guys about what you can do to promote arm uh, positioning. Uh, hopefully, you understand better the three dimensional concepts. And um, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna take it off the share. Um, actually, I'll leave it on if there's still more questions. We can hang out for another five minutes. I apologize. Um, this is our first. We went over, and I got excited, and probably you guys did too. Any any more Q and A's? Nothing coming through right now. All right. 
So stay tuned for the next one. I mean, this it takes a lot to build these, obviously. I'm, I'm going between multiple screens. We're going to have another one in the next quarter. However, if you weren't comfortable or you're kind of thinking of things, you're like, man, or you have something burning you want to share about this particular case, one, it can help this athlete. It can help me. It can help everybody else. You know, feel free to uh, to email us. Okay, hey, we got a couple an uh, oh. answers questions coming through here. Okay, uh, John, he's saying so. If this guy is healthy, what changes did you make? Okay, so remember the first thing that we we're focusing on is improving the catapult position, right? I, I have it here, right? So his shoulder balance. Remember, I told you is off. Okay, his external rotator cuff it, it's not matching up. He's super strong and internal. I mean, like in the eighties, like this is a this guy's got massive strength and back behind him. It's still high, it's still over twenty percent of his body weight, but it, it's not catching up. So you know. The training, if you take the certified arm care specialist course, if you just enrolled in it and you haven't taken it all the way through, you know, the next iteration that we have has a whole algorithm. The spear training model has a two factor approach. We look at how do we change volume and workload, but then we have to look at the relative combination of training. So essentially with this particular athlete with such high strength, I, I basically bring internal rotation down to just keep the lights on one set. And then I'm going three sets for external because I'm balancing this sucker. Right. Because now if I balance the sucker, both sides of the joint is going to be in a better spot. I might manage um, not as significant changes up and down. There might be more consistency through from the layback to the ball release. OK, but, you know, the, the whole thing is we're, we're talking about arm positioning. That's what really at the at the end of the day, that really matters. We have inconsistency of arm positioning. That's where we affect our pitches per inning and it, it starts climbing. Right. Um, and I didn't get into the proximal side. When I talk about proximal, let me just quickly tell you about that. I'm talking about this joint, this segment, okay? And it's connection to that segment. That's the central part of the body. That's proximal. Anything that's kind of away, essentially, from your pelvis region, um, we start saying that's distal. So even the trunk is distal to the pelvis. The pelvis is kind of the root of all energy. And um, we go down the leg, that's distal, right? Distal. This is distal to the upper leg, right? Um, and then, uh, you know, when I get to the arm, here's the trunk that would be proximal. Okay. Then the arm, as we get away from the center parts of the body, it starts going distal. So th this is how you look at things, you know, in the kinetic chain, we'll talk about energy transfer uh, in, in one of these and how interesting it is between the, the proximal and the distal. Um, but you know, these are, these are all things guys, you know, we're going to learn. I, I don't expect you after you take the course to be an expert, but I do expect you to attend these things and to watch them and to become an expert so that when you're reading the data between strength, okay, and length and coordination, you're not confused. And you can, you you yourself can be a great resource for not only your organization, your players, but, you know, people in this community. Um, that's what we want. We want more education. We want more idea sharing. You know, I want speakers that you guys think, holy, we got to get so-and-so in here um, to, to talk to the group. Um, I want this to be a mastermind group. You've invested in your education. We're investing in you guys. And that that's for damn sure. Um, hey, Ryan, uh, we got a question on where the recording is going to be available. We're putting that right into the. It's going to be in Thinkific. Right? It's going to be in Thinkific after this. Everybody, it's going to be added to it. Um, I'm just going to basically batch process it that you can go and review it. You take the course. It's cool. You get kind of the after hours, you know, meat and potatoes and like, oh, man, now, now, that's starting to make sense. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I do want you to, to contribute, you know, this isn't all about me talking or Jordan talking. Um, I want this to be a very special community, like nothing else that you are sharing and that you're providing insight to people. And I know some of you people, I think we have another really good question here, Ryan. Yeah. I know, I know I don't want to keep these guys too long, but yeah. would you address scaption? here as well i'm yeah. it's from matt yeah I'm so so that's the thing about from a strength this, this athlete doesn't have a scaption issue right so kind of looking at all the strength elements the scaption is really high you know and, and that's a great thing to see most athletes are super weak and long lever i know you know in the medical staff you guys are taking the course you're kind of going to understand like all right i don't have to do so much 90 90 stuff because it's only really here you know and even then it's not 90 90 for a lot of guys right so you're, you're going to start to kind of think about long lever strength. This kid, um, I've been working with him and he's killing it. He's so strong in long lever. So I need to attack that, that shoulder imbalance, right? And even when I look at the primer, okay, and I'm looking on the CSV to see, does this athlete have long lever internal and external? It's not the same 
um, in the short range. So I know setting the catapult and putting the shoulder in the right position, it's kind of upstream from all the things that we might be seeing downstream. And then, you know, we keep giving biomechanical reviews. Um, I, I assess these things. If you got athletes, you know, you want to talk to us about, you know, getting help on this, we can, we can, you know, figure out how to support you, um, you know, looking at this data, but you're going to get kind of exposed and you're going to get a feel for this, you know, in this particular group, you know, no question, silly. Um, if you weren't comfortable to, to, you know, put one out, um, please email still us. Have some more questions coming. We got to, we got to cut it. This, this is three forty-five. We will, Jordan, if you can uh, take... real quick, I think this is an important one here. There's a couple good ones on here. They're asking, um, if you can connect everybody onto a group message, um, or an email chain, something like that to keep connections going and keep learning off of each other. So I thought about this. So the follow-up of this is I'm going to ask you if you want your email shared or not. Right. I'm not going to make everybody who doesn't want to get bombarded with questions and, and you know, they, you might want a little bit more privacy, you know, for who you are. I know there's some major league people on here that, you know, might not really want to field a lot of community based questions. Um, it'd be great if you do. It would definitely enrich the community. But I need to really kind of get a, a spreadsheet going and, and click off, you know, who wants to be able to think pair share out of the out of the group. But I mean, that's that's kind of the meaning of this. It's a network. It's not like any other network because you, you actually have to contribute to it um, in some way. You might not be public about it. You might be asked some things based on your position and where you're at um, to, mm -hmm. to help out here um, and, and, you know, keep your identity concealed um, and the player's identity is concealed. But the case studies, this, this is how we're going to learn. This is how we're going to get better. This is how we're going to crush injuries. Um, we're going to maximize pitching performance, throwing performance, and eradicate injuries. That's what we're looking to do. Um, and if you are in an organization, you're doing well, if you have less than one athlete in every 100 having surgery, okay, the national average right now is 5.4. If you're in a big league team, you got double digit surgeries, something's not working right. Okay. If you're the only one trying to be like, you know, the, the sound machine and there, you got the magnaphone saying, Hey, look, we, we got to do something different here. You got double digit surgeries, man. You got problems. Okay. Nobody should be having that. If you're learning this stuff and you're really active and, and you're, you're impactful um, wherever you are, you are going to ensure that you can significantly reduce your injury rates. As I leave this, I, I, I always want to say that strength matters most. It does. And when it comes to pitching, don't come to me with miles per hour or spin efficiency or, you know, uh, I don't know, spin ratios or, you know, stuff grades, innings pitched. If you're not contributing to innings pitched and you're talking about pitch data all the time, you're really not helping. You aren't. The key is giving your athletes the, the opportunity to gain experience, be impactful and, and not be, you know, down for 18 months. So think of that, right? Strength matters most. Okay. And then you're going to coordination and you learn in our new reshoot, you're going to learn that circulation is the king. Okay. You're going to learn more about that. Um, when when the uh, new specialist course becomes available and you guys will all be, you know, grandfathered in to take it again. It's extra four hours on that one. We good? I think we're good. For those of you who had questions, Jordan, hopefully you're able to, uh, to, to index those. You know, we'll, we'll try to build these into our future uh, scrum. We're going to let you guys know as well. Um, and really, you know, thanks a ton um, for today. I know, you know, it's a little bit rough at times, you know, getting through uh, all these people uh, to learn, but, um, you know, we're really appreciative. So till next time, stay tuned. Remember strength matters most. We're dominating throwing and pitching performance. We're eradicating injuries. That's what the group's all about, right? So thank you, Jordan, too, uh, the co-hosts and, and obviously this company, armcare.com for uh, putting something magical together. Have a good rest of the day.